a new episode of MT5, today with the Catch the Snitch World Cup expansion. Enjoy! Hi, this is Marcel again and today I'm gonna take a look into the World Cup expansion for Catch the Snitch. It's an uh, expansion with additional rules that are recommended for tournaments or leagues and stuff like this and also at national team rules so that you can not only use the uh, four houses of Hogwarts as teams but also ten national teams. And uh, that's why I thought it uh, a good idea to uh, look into this expansion because if um, this game grows bigger and there will be tournaments and stuff like this, uh, this expansion will definitely be used and it's um, the expansion that beside the uh, star player box was in the kickstarter and uh, um, ca i can do something about the star players as well but it's only adding uh, air players and this is also additional rules and that's why i start with this so it's a small box i can give my hand as comparison it's only slightly smaller than a hand and if we open it there is simply a lot uh, yeah, a small rule book and then a lot of cards so i unpacked the cards now and uh, arranged them here on the table so to give you an overview there are five different type of cards we have player cards for national teams we have additional slipstreaming cards for the snitch deck. We have event cards. We have the 10 team cards. And we have a lot of tactical cards that you use with your national team. Before you get uh, too excited over the number, uh, if my math is correct, there are 230 cards in this pack, but a lot of them are duplicates. And uh, I will talk about this later. Before we look into the cards a bit more specific, we will just discuss the new rules that are added with this expansion. Therefore, I'm gonna look into this little rule book and there are basically four new things. Those new things are events, fame, the league rules and within the league rules the supporter which you can buy for your team. We're gonna start with the events. That's where you need those cards. In a game, there will be three events. And as you see um, on this card, they are influencing the game mechanics. For example, um, make it di more difficult to pass, or um, we can look at a few others, make uh, bloodshots, more potent in the bloodshot movement or even make your roads better or simply making the game more unreliable and chancy by moving the snitch additionally. And you see that for all cards there is uh, on the bottom side a uh, way to gain fame and this is the second mechanic. It's only a small thing. I got the impression that Night games really like those small things that they add to their games, which uh, is like layer and layer and layer. And I think it's a little bit hard to get into, but um, in the end, you can enjoy all of them. So fame uh, you collect over the game or even in a league system over several games. And you can either use them to get uh, effects in the game, like removing a lock from your player or uh, team card, or you can gain more galleons to spend for your team for the next games. That said, in a league system, it brings us to the other two new rule elements, which are uh, team building, which we will do at the end of this video, and supporters. And supporters you can buy with galleons uh, between games and it's like stuff like a physical coach or a seer for your team, a financial goblin and uh, two others. And I think that there may be more in the future. 
and uh, there is a lot of design space and they also give you little effects for your team. So uh, additionally, those snitch cards slip streaming, which I can get out of the way before we look at uh, team building. Um, there is one card for each of the 10 teams and you simply use it with the uh, snitch deck and uh, they all have different effects but uh, follow the normal slipstreaming rule that you um, apply the fast impulse, the impulse in the middle of the snitch card, regardless of um, the type uh, of your next card, and uh, you get an additional effect, and those are different for all the national teams. Okay, now we can <laughs> get into the really interesting stuff. Um, you see there are a lot of cards here. Let us start with the national team players. Those are 28 cards, so you can build up to four teams and uh, this expansion is built so that you actually can do two games with four players at the same time. So if you have a uh, player group of four players, you only need one of this expansion and not each player needs uh, one expansion. The national teams are like the house teams, a bit redundant because all chasers got the same abilities and all uh, beaters got the same abilities and so on and so on. And even those other cards, as I said, there are enough to build four, um, four teams are all the same. So there are 12 uh, basically uh, identical chaser cards herein. They only differ in the number so that you can uh, have a way to differentiate who got a stun token or something like this uh, when playing. Um, I'm a bit disappointed in this, but I think it's a great way for the community to um, yeah, do fan -made expansions, um, but from night game side, it's, yeah, I think they could have been a bit more creative and give us a bit more. Um, luckily, we will not have simply the same player abilities for all our players when we are playing with different teams, because our team cards as mentioned, there are 10 for 10 different teams. I'm quickly gonna go over them. It's Spain, Japan, England, USA, Germany, Ireland, Bulgaria, Australia, the Nordic team, and France. And as you might have seen, all of them have uh, at the bottom a trade for one of the position. So if you play Spain, your beaters will not have the abilities from those cards, but will have uh, this ability, which is somehow okay. <laughs> but if, for example, both teams have uh, a trade on the team card for the keeper, then the other six um, team members will still be the same for both teams. So as said before, I think they could have been a bit more creative with this. Additionally, in the middle, you see an ability with a lock. So this can be once uh, unused until you can remove the lock. For example, when your opponent uh, does a hand swap or if you have another rule to remove the lock. And it's always an ability that is quite strong and meant to give the team some identity. Additionally, the team identities come mainly from the tactical deck. Here on the card you see that there are two symbols. And uh, here with the tactical cards you see those symbols here as well. There are nine of them. I'm quickly gonna look into the rulebook to see what they mean. It's attack, speed, courage, defense, cunning, player control, 
Pitch Control, Rival Control and Versatile. And how deck building works, um, there are eight zero cost cards. There are uh, one additional one galleon cost card per tactical type. So, um, and you are only allowed to use tactical cards of the two tactical types of your team. So you get 18 cards, nine plus nine, and you have to choose 15. And of those 18 cards, two have a cost of one galleon. So if you don't want to spend any, you basically can choose one card, uh, which you don't take. Or if you take all the cards in consideration, you can choose three card that you don't use uh, out of those 18 to get a deck of 15. This again is leads to a very limited individualization that you can do with your team because um, yeah, it's mostly set which things you will use. Again, there are duplicates. Uh, all cards are in uh, there twice. So that if you got uh, are playing with four players at the same time, you can use uh, two teams with the same tactical type. I already read all of the uh, tactical cards and they are quite flavorful. And I think that um, they match their tactical type and um, will definitely give the teams different identities so that uh, even though the players are somehow different uh, similar you will have a different feel with uh, when playing different national teams okay that's uh, all for this expansion i'm um, a bit torn how much i like it uh, i think there are really great ideas for example, the um, tactical types as a core mechanic, I really like that you can just take the best cards and um, build big combos or uh, play every team as you like it tactically. Uh, but our, yeah, it, give the, it gives the teams really an identity and uh, makes them play in a specific way. Uh, this is something I really like, but um, maybe it's because I'm uh, coming from a tabletop background. I would like to uh, individualize my team and I don't think this is possible with this expansion because there are only little ways to tweak your team and make it your own or think about uh, specific combos or yeah, really dive deep into list building. I think this is not possible with this expansion. Additionally, I'm not that convinced that all those small uh, additional mechanics like fame and um, the supporters are really necessary, but I am convinced that uh, they lack uh, complexity and um, yeah, I have to see after playing more um, games and after using this expansion for real if I'm able to handle though this many rules or if uh, maybe you can decide with your co-players whether you um, just skip some of them. Maybe good to know at the end is that there is a national team box of miniatures which are in a different color than all the Hogwarts house teams so that you can uh, yeah, have additional models to use for your national team. Um, I think it's a bit weird that then again all um, teams would have the same uh, models for their national teams. Maybe there will come additional uh, models in the future. I think it's a good idea if you can get an additional core box to uh, combine those and um, yeah, build your own team. That's what I plan to do if I play with the national teams so that I just pick the models from the four houses which uh, I like the most and then make my own national team painting them in the colors of the nation and use this. 
Of course, I'm interested how you like those rules, if you think it's too much, if you think it's too little, especially with um, yeah, different cards <laughs> or if there are too much duplicate cards in this box and uh, very interested would I be in people who already use those and build a national team and maybe can share their experience in the comments. For now, whether you play with the Hogwarts houses or the national teams already, uh, please enjoy your games. <laughs>